Welcome to a Toast to Truth. This is where I share the mental, financial, and emotional frustrations of being an entrepreneur. This is season four, episode four, Kill the Strong Black Woman Myth. Before we dive into today's episode, let me ask you this. Who are you trying to be superwoman for? Now, we all have heard Alicia Keys um, song, Superwoman. I know we all jam to it. I don't even know if people say jam, but I just did. However, that is really a harmful effect on black women. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's episode. So this is a good continuation of season two, episode 12, where we talked about, I'm not angry, I'm ambitious. And we talked about the angry black woman syndrome. Many articles are being written about stress and black women. And of course, April is Stress Awareness Month. So I'm definitely sharing information to help you to protect your peace and not let stress interrupt your life, okay? It's my spring out of stress campaign this month. But I'm very, very happy by all of these articles that have been written about stress in black women, okay? Because I was a superwoman for decades, not even years, just decades. I thought that was what I was supposed to do. That's what we are told that black women are the rock of the family, the rock of the community, and everything depends on us. But by doing that, we age our bodies 7.5 years faster than our white counterparts, being the superwoman. While we may look great and young on the outside, the inside of our body, which counts, probably more in my opinion, is slowly, or not even slowly, rapidly deteriorating. And that is how you get on Facebook or you have this remark, I can't believe she died. She looked just fine yesterday. Stress kills and is killing black women because we are trying to be superwoman for everyone but ourselves. Now, I read this book last year called Shifting the Double Lives of Black Women and Depression. Really, really excellent book by these two um, therapists, psychologists, and more information is on my blog. I did like a whole series for um, Minority Mental Health Awareness Month last year, breaking down this book breaking down the illnesses that are specifically for black women. So that link will be on the show notes for this particular episode. Now I realize there aren't enough people educating us black women on the harmful effects of stress. While we see a lot of people talking about self care They're talking about pampering yourself, but they're not talking about addressing the root of your superwoman syndrome. They are not talking about addressing the root of killing the strong black woman myth and taking care of yourself. You can only go to the spa. You can only go to the nail salon. You can only get so many massages before it loses its effect of actually making you feel better about yourself. You have to get to the root of what your stress and what your problem really is. Now, our society thrives on stress, it's a, but yet it's a precursor to many preventable health issues. This is why I'm on a mission to help others leave the strong black woman myth behind, put self preservation first and protect your peace. Why? For years, I was sick. I mean, just completely sick. Stomach pains. I couldn't eat right. Always tired. I had aches and pains in my body. 
Every time I went to the doctor, I would pay for all of the blood work. I would pay for so many tests and they could never figure out what was wrong with me. It wasn't until I started learning and doing research on stress that I figured out what was causing all of my ailments uh, for so many years. It was stress. Stress was killing my body and doctors could not see it because it is not a physical uh, illness. What happens is stress manifests into physical illness, but they can't find and treat the root of that illness. So you will continue to have sickness without any cure because no one can detect or see stress because we hide it so well. If you want to be an entrepreneur, hanging on to this strong black woman persona will lead you to burnout quicker than you will ever imagine. I, I was there. I literally had a breakdown because of all of the responsibility I had taken on. And it's not other people had given it to me. It was I took on the responsibility because I felt I was the most qualified person to get everything done. However, me taking on everyone's responsibility, me taking on everyone's emotional baggage, and me taking on being there for everyone, excluding myself, led to many, many uh, days where I could not get out of bed because I was just so stressed and depressed and I never really understood why. This is why I work with you to help you understand what is the root, the cause of your stress. And then we start working on uprooting it, getting it out of your life. That's what a mental detox strategy is. It is part of the process to help you kill this strong black woman myth. You don't need to be quote unquote a strong black woman in order to be able to do your job, run your business, take care of your family, and be a contributing person in your community. And we're going to talk about that in this episode. But here's one thing I want to ask. What is the community doing for you? Think about that. We as women give so much of ourselves to everyone. How many of those people are giving back to you? How many of those people at your church, in your community, appreciate or even just say thank you for all that you are doing for them? I'm not saying don't do for them because they're not appreciative, but I'm saying if you are killing and exhausting yourself to appease other people, then you may need to rethink this whole being superwoman for them, being there for them, showing off your skills for them, and let them figure it out for themselves. So let's talk about the cup and the saucer. This is something I've shared over the last few months because it was a great analogy given to me. Think of a teacup and a saucer. So your teacup sits on the little saucer, which is like the little plate. Your cup, everyone talks about how your cup has to be full in order for you to be able to do what you need to do. They are correct. However, when you have a full cup, that is your energy. That energy is for you and you only. You do not have anything else to give to anyone. If you do not have energy spilling over onto your saucer, that is the cup, the little plate under the cup then you don't have energy to give to other people. The whole purpose of the saucer is so that you can give your overflow, your abundance to other people, not deplete your cup, not deplete yourself because other people need you. You have to give from your saucer. Do not give from your cup. You cannot be the best you. You cannot contribute the most if your cup is constantly being drained because you're giving it to other people. You're giving that energy to other people. You need to fill your cup up so much 
but the energy is overflowing onto your saucer. That way, all that's sitting on the saucer is what you are able to give to other people. And you will be able to give that energy to other people and not wear yourself out. Until more of us live by the principle, we'll always run ourselves into the ground. That's what happens to the families and communities we killed ourselves for. They just keep going, 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 and they don't really pay attention to what it's doing to us. The constant asking, needing, wanting, begging women to do everything. They are not aware. They are not paying attention to what this is doing to us. I'm not saying not to do anything for anyone else. I am saying you must give from your overflow. Stop volunteering to do and be everything to everyone. The only way we can be of any use to our families and our community is to value self-preservation, to create an atmosphere of peace in and for our lives and to forget about other people's expectations or stereotypes of us. And I'm going to definitely address the stereotypes later in this episode. It's more important that we learn to value our own perception of ourselves above anyone else. And yes, that includes other black women. We can be very judgmental. I know sometimes I can be judgmental. However, if that is how a woman chooses to live her life, that's how she chooses to live her life. The only thing I can do is say, hey, I can help you lessen your burden, lessen the amount of stress you allow in your life. And it's up to you to accept that or not. I'm not going to push it on you, but I know what it's like when you have given everything and you don't even have anything left in your cup to give yourself. I have been there. I know the feeling. I know the burden, the heaviness that it carries. Before I dive deep into killing the strong black woman myth, let's take a sip. I help entrepreneurs and educators protect their peace by preventing stress and frustration from taking over. Each week in the Truth Confidant with Vernetta R. Freeney Facebook group, I share information, resources, and weekly lessons as it relates to mental detox. In order to have peace in your life, you must know the correct action to take to get it, preserve it, and prevent anything from taking it away. Request to join and start your process to a peace-filled life. See you in there, The Truth Confidant with Vernetta R. Freeney, Facebook group. Okay, so let's address this superwoman syndrome because it was brought up. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up Maxine Waters, the Congresswoman who made the statement, I am a strong black woman. And everyone just went crazy on that because of uh, these horrible, disgusting remarks that were made about her. I'm not against us being strong black women. However, I'm against us being strong black women to the death of ourselves, where we are giving and we are not maintaining or receiving. Why does the superwoman syndrome have to go? Why must it go? Too many of us are dying. Too many of us are leaving this world too soon. Too many of us are killing ourselves. And I mean that literally committing suicide because we can't take the pressure of the responsibility that we have in our life, or we mentally are not able to understand how to compartmentalize, how to say no to all of the pressure, stress, responsibility that we have going on in our life. We as women are the foundation for many things in this world. 
However, if there's a crack in your foundation, how long do you think that building will stand up? How long do you think it will take before it starts creating cracks going up to the roof? How long do you think it will take before that building eventually collapses? That's the same with black women in the black community. When we have a crack, that means when we hide our stressors, when we hide how overworked and overwhelmed we are, when we hide the stress, the depression that we're dealing with, that is creating cracks in the foundation within our families and our communities. And it does not take long before those cracks go into other parts of our lives and start to affect other people in our lives and affect other parts of our professional careers. We cannot put on some cape and go save everyone and then go home and cry ourselves to sleep silently because no one is there to save us. We have to learn how to save ourselves so that the people who are around us are able to feed off of that energy. I talk a lot about energy because it's a very important element to our lives. The energy that we have is contagious, whether it is positive or negative. This energy allows us to affect all of the people who come in contact with us. So do we want to inject positive or negative energy into our families, into our community, into our business, into our workplace? That is something you have to decide. A lot of times we inject negativity because we are masking the tension within ourselves and we're putting on this facade of I'm a happy person, I'm great, nothing's wrong with me. However, your energy is speaking differently. People pick up on your energy. So you're probably wondering why am I being treated a certain way but yet I'm portraying this positive image because energy speaks to energy. People can move past the facade and know that you are not being genuine, that you are not actually happy, that you are not at peace. I had um, in the recording of this season, um, I mean, a, a stressor come up. And had this been two years ago, that stressor would have really taken me over the edge. And it, the stressor is a class that I was dealing, that I was teaching that, which is very stressful to teach because I teach at an adult school is a little different because they really get to make the choices. They really dictate how the school is run. Um, education is taken on a very different perspective. However, I took three days off from work uh, last month and I was taking those days because I really needed a mental break. I really needed to fill myself back up so that I can continue to live in the peace that I worked so hard to obtain. What I did was take those days off, but before I took those days off, I met with my supervisor and we both discussed the situation and I made the comment, if they like the sub, the teacher that I asked to take over, then they can keep her. I will be happy to walk away. By Friday, I got a message, an email stating that they had uh, agreed to stick with that teacher for the rest of the cycle. Now, some people would be a little upset, like, man, I'm going to lose money, or this is awful, it's going to look bad. I was so relieved because that meant I did not have to pretend to carry and hold space for a class that does not even respond in a positive manner towards me. I really think it was some anti-blackness going on, but I won't address that here. However, what I will say is that I looked to the positive of me being able to let go of that stressor. 
I now get to come into work two hours later. That means I get to spend my morning working on the truth confidant, working on things for a toast to truth, and working on things for the Houston African American Bloggers Association. I now have a few more extra hours that I get to dedicate to what I am working on outside of teaching. I also get to keep the three classes that I adore, that is fun for me to teach, that I walk in and I want to pour into those students because I have the energy on my saucer to pour into those students. Working with that class took so much from me that I was lacking in having the energy for myself because I was trying to be everything to that class and I was not being able to refill myself. I even have friends reach out to me and say that you are acting differently. And I knew I needed to walk away from that class. I just needed to figure out how it was done. And everything worked out in a way where I was able to walk away. They have a new teacher. Everything is great at the school with the transition. And the moment I read that email, for some reason, it felt like all of this energy was pouring back into my body. Now, why am I sharing this story with you? Because when you let go of something that is stressing you out, the energy that you have been lacking, the energy that has been missing in your life will suddenly pour back in. Now, your stressors will be definitely different than mine, but you have them. And you need to set a deadline for when you need to let them go. That makes your life simpler. You can still be superwoman without doing 101 things. You may be doing 10 to 15 things, but you're still superwoman to the people that you are helping, that you are loving, that you have in your life. But the superwoman syndrome must go if you expect to live a long, healthy life. Now, let's hop into this uh, Black Women at Work hashtag. And what does it mean to our mental state? Now, I really didn't get on the hashtag that much. I did read some of them. I know it stemmed from the disparaging remarks made to April Ryan and Maxine Waters. Some of the black women at work tweets and Facebook posts were just absolutely disheartening. The amount of trauma, it's not even drama, it's trauma that we face in the workplace is horrible. And I've, I've had my fair share of horrible workplace situations. And I know I had a temper and pop off at the mouth at that time. So it never really ended well for me because I always had to have a comeback for whatever was happening to me. But what did that do to my mental state? It kept me in a state of frustration because I'm always trying to figure out what did I do to upset this person so much that they have to single me out opposed to everyone else. Why am I being the one called out when I'm doing the exact same thing everyone else at my job is doing? It took me learning about mental detox, it took me learning about everything that I teach in a mental detox strategy session to understand that people lash out and people try to evoke emotion from those which they are intimidated by, because I have been told that I can be intimidating. And I ask, what makes me so intimidating? I mean, literally, I'm not going to give my weight and height, but I'm not that big of a person. One person told me, and this was a man, my confidence in myself, that I know when I walk into a room 
whether I know what I'm talking about or not, I'm still going to walk in and act like I just did that. What this black woman at work hashtag has shown is the microaggression that black women deal with and face every single day in the workplace and how we are supposed to have these respectability politics and smile and kiki and aha while people are disrespecting our integrity and honor as a woman. What Black Women at Work hashtag has shown is that Black women are supposed to come into a job and be the workhorse. A workhorse doesn't have any say. A workhorse doesn't give any orders. A a workhorse does not offer any feedback, suggestions, or improvements. A workhorse comes in, clocks in on time, does the task given, and then clocks out and goes home. That's not how this is supposed to go. We are not the most educated um, ethnicity and gender for no reason. We have ideas. We have things that we can bring to a job that will make everything better grow. That's the whole point of us working is so that we can be part of something that grows. What I walked away from this black woman at work hashtag is that too many of us are allowing these microaggressions to fester within our soul and not really address how we can protect ourselves from allowing it to seep into our soul. And when that happens, we have the frustration, we have the anger, we have the resentment, we have the sarcasm, we have the pettiness that comes out. And we just think that that is acceptable behavior because we are protecting ourselves. It's not. We need to learn how to create a strategy that will deal with this stressor so that we can go to work, do our job, and not let the ignorant comments take us out of our mental state for the day. So at the end of the day, I say this, black women at work is something that we all, it does not matter your ethnicity or gender, we all need to take seriously and begin to have conversations with the black women you work with and see what their feelings are at work, and how you can help to make them feel part of the company that they are literally giving their lives for because they are there eight to ten eight to ten hours a day, which means they are away from their family. If they are there that much every single day, then you need to see how you can allow them to be a contributor to that company. The last thing I want to share, and I and I gave a story of um, me and a stressor, but I want to share my personal experience being a strong black woman. And, and why am I sharing this experience? Because you may be able to relate or you may be able to see your own experience and realize that there are some things that you may need to start doing a little differently. A little differently. I am the oldest child and I am the oldest grandchild. So double whammy. Ever since I was young, my father would put this responsibility on me to essentially be my mother when she wasn't there. That included the cooking, the cleaning, the taking care of my younger siblings, I also ran a babysitting company when I started it when I was 11. So I babysat uh, these children in my neighborhood and the youngest were nine month old twins. So I would have these nine month old twins, their four year old brother, their two and three year old cousin, my siblings, and sometimes my cousins. At 11, 12 years old, I'm watching that many children and I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, washing clothes, all of this stuff. So my whole strong black woman uh, persona developed at a very early age. As I got older, because I was so used to having 
that much responsibility. When I got to middle school and high school, I signed up for clubs. I played, you know, volleyball, basketball, ran track, played softball. And then I wasn't just in the clubs. I always needed to be one of the leaders in the club. Plus, I took honors and AP classes. Okay. <laughs> so think of all of this stuff as a middle schooler, as a high schooler. Then I got to college. I kept the same level of responsibility. I was always the president or vice president of the club I was in. When I got to college, I was working two jobs, going to school full time. It just got so common for me to have that much responsibility that I didn't think anything different. So from the time I was probably 11, 12 till 22, that's about 10 years. And it became so ingrained that I never really thought anything of it. It wasn't until I moved to Atlanta after I graduated from undergrad and I got this job at this nonprofit run by a retired basketball player. And I felt like I was starting to lose it. Everything was becoming too much. I couldn't handle everything. The comments that were being made at work, I just lashed out. I went off on my supervisor because I didn't like the way she spoke to me. I didn't like the way she handled things. I didn't know at that time, but I was literally falling apart because the cracks in my foundation were starting to show. I lived most of my 20s like that, showing the cracks in my foundation because my mental state had been completely depleted and I had no idea how to recharge myself because it was never even a thought. It was never even something that was given to me to even consider that I needed to take things off of my plate. When I moved to Houston, I literally was at a state of exhaustion. I couldn't think, I couldn't do. All I knew is I needed a job because I needed to pay bills. Luckily, I had a really good friend who let me stay with her for a few months so I can get on my feet. I did not know that I was experiencing a deep depression while I was staying with her because I had depleted my soul, my energy to the point where I could not even move for days at a time. I literally could not leave her place because I had no energy to do anything. Fast forward, I started teaching public school in uh, Houston, in the Houston area, and it was just like boom, 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 constant, constant, constant doing for my students, staying up at the school till nine o'clock, buying things with my own money, making sure that my students had a wonderful, unforgettable, memorable experience in kindergarten and first grade. I wanted my students to love school. So I did everything in my power to make it something that they would love. However, I was giving so much of myself and then I would suggest ideas at work at the school and because I suggested them, I led and did them. I was over our black history program. I also tried to incorporate things that I was learning in grad school. I was in grad school when I taught. So it was a lot that I started to do like I did in my teenage years and early 20s because that's all I knew. All I knew is that in order for me to be seen as a valuable black woman, I needed to make myself available to everyone. And I, I want you to catch that. A lot of us think in order to be a valuable person, we have to make ourselves available to everyone. Well, let me tell you, that's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Long story short, I left education and I sunk into even deeper depression. Two years ago, 
after I literally could not take anything else. And I felt I was literally at the end of the road when it came to my life. I took a weekend and a friend booked a hotel for me. Only two people knew where I was. And I stayed there the whole weekend and cried. I really sat and evaluated every life choice that I made to get me where I was sitting in a hotel room crying for a whole weekend. That decision, that weekend, I made the decision to start seeing a counselor. And I did. For all of 2015, I saw this um, emotional freedom technique therapist, and it really did help. In the process of me doing that, I realized I was not the only woman who was struggling trying to be the strong black woman because we wanted to be seen as valuable. We wanted people to adore us. We wanted people to accept us. That started my journey to do as much research as possible to help other women not get to the point where you feel there's nothing else for you to do in this life but to leave it. And that's not where we want to go. Like I stated earlier in this episode, too many of us are killing ourselves because we just don't feel anything left. And we can't do that. We cannot allow so many beautiful souls to leave because the cracks in their foundation were showing. As an entrepreneur, you have even more stress because running a business is stressful, period. Running a business has a lot of challenges that you will not be prepared for. doesn't matter if you have a business degree or not. Business is different every single day. There's no routine like it is at a job. Two, not only run a business, but also be the superwoman for everyone in your family and your community. You are literally sending yourself to an early grave because eventually the cracks in your foundation will show. And when the cracks in your foundation shows, it will affect your business. And when it affects your business, it will have a ripple effect and affect everything else in your life. Because your family is dependent on the money you make from your business. The community is probably dependent on your business for jobs, for donations, and for um, sponsorships. You, as an entrepreneur, must protect your foundation. And in order to protect your foundation, you have to let the superwoman syndrome go. You can be a strong black woman without giving yourself to everyone else. You can be a strong black woman. You can be a valuable woman without depleting your energy so that others can have the things that they want from you. You can be a strong black woman by contributing what you have on your saucer. And I'm going to end it with that. Now let's get ready for our final toast. The spring out of stress tip is to learn to put boundaries on your time. Your time is the most valuable thing you can give to others. So honor it by giving it only when it's available to give. Honor your time so your time honors you by putting boundaries so that you are only given from your saucer. That way you do not get cracks in your foundation. Thank you for listening to another episode of A Toast to Truth. And you can always go to my site, BernettaRFranny.com to catch up on past episodes and learn more about the Spring Out of Stress uh, campaign.